With just one press conference, Cristiano Ronaldo single-handedly wiped $4 billion dollars from the market value of Coca-Cola. A massive financial catastrophe. Well, actually, the company's stock had already dropped before Ronaldo moved the bottles from the screen, so he had nothing to do with it. But still, the stunt was an instant social media sensation, forcing Coca-Cola to issue a response. Ronaldo was able to use his incredible levels of worldwide attention to embarrass a massive corporation. It's also a prime example of how the Euro stage has shifted from a mere football tournament into a crucial marketing opportunity for global brands. This is especially true for the sportswear industry. Nike, Adidas and Puma battle for the best teams, players and moments at every major sporting event. As Italy and England shine on the pitch and Coca-Cola loses big of it, which brand is the winner of Euro 2020? Welcome to Athletic Interest and the Battle of the Brands! While football teams measure success through goals scored and points gained, brands find their success through increased revenues and healthy profit margins. So how can a brand win Euro 2020? One, be seen by the most people, and two, be associated with the key moments of triumph at the tournament. The easiest way to achieve this is to become the kit supplier for a football federation. Each country has a massive build and fan base, and success will inevitably lead to millions of shirt sales. Nike and Adidas have clearly cornered the market for associations at Euro 2020. Combined, they sponsor a large majority of teams, including most of the pre-tournament favorites. But England turned out to be the only successful Nike team at the Euro, with France, Portugal and the Netherlands being eliminated even before the quarterfinals. Things didn't go much better for Adidas, with two of their best bets, Germany and Belgium, failing to make it very far. Puma surprised the market leaders with three of their total of four teams in the quarterfinals. Most would have expected at least one Adidas team in the final. Nike will feel relieved that England made it through, but it will be Puma who are the happiest. With Italy defeating two high-profile Adidas teams, Puma is certainly challenging the traditional Nike-Adidas domination over Euro football. While Adidas may have lost in the shirt wars, they will find some solace when it comes to player boot sponsorship. Combined with Nike, the two brands have more than 80% of players on their roster. Although more than half of the players at the Euros wear Nike boots, guaranteeing the brand far greater exposure throughout the competition. With almost all goals scored using Nike or Adidas boots, both brands are also dominating when it comes to quality. While losing Ronaldo early in the tournament and witnessing Mbappé miss that final penalty will have been painful to watch for Nike, they will still be the happiest of the two. More than half of the tournament goals were scored by Nike players. This perfectly reflects Nike's recent shift of strategy to scale down their player portfolio and focus on strikers and attacking midfielders, who happen to score the most goals. Besides teams and players that we see on the pitch, what about the campaigns that the big brands run off the pitch? It is customary for both Adidas and Nike to bring out big budget adverts before every tournament to build on the hype that surrounds it. These minute-long celebrations of football contain a glorious mixture of star players, gravity-defying camera angles and vague motivational messages. While Adidas have the advantage of being the only sportswear company that can mention Euro 2020 in their advertising, all eyes seem to be firmly fixed on the swoosh. The general reception of these commercials is hard to quantify, but we can look to their respective YouTube views for some guidance. The Nike commercial, which was unable to mention Euro 2020, racked up over 4.7 million views in its first three days on YouTube. The Adidas clip, complete with the algorithm-friendly combination of Paul Pogba and Euro 2020, received a rather dismal 6,600 views after one week. These numbers speak for themselves. 
So despite France and Portugal being eliminated early, Nike still played a major role. England saved the tournament for the swoosh, as their performance is likely to sell plenty of jerseys in a market crazy for football. New Balance with Raheem Sterling, Puma with Switzerland and Hommel with Denmark. Underdog Brands owns some of the key moments of the tournament and managed to steal some of the attention that is often only reserved for Adidas and Nike. The success of Puma teams and players hint that the brand is catching up with Adidas and might become the new challenger for Nike. Still, the dominance of Nike and Adidas was strong, especially in terms of players. Ronaldo not only scored five goals, but also owned one of the key narratives. It shows that a few superstar players are becoming more and more influential, also thanks to social media. Ronaldo reached the 300 million follower mark on Instagram during the tournament. He is the most followed account in the world. The Coca-Cola incident underlined that impressively. The biggest European federation, UEFA, was busy with the damage control because their most popular player didn't care much about the federation's partner. Is the power shifting from federations to players?